He cohibits with her, and after some time she comes and reports, look, I'm carrying your baby. In the meantime, the husband of this woman is at war with the Palestinians, the Philistines. So, Hazrat Dawud has that man called. According to the Bible, this is all what I'm reading from the Bible. He has that man called Uriah by name. That's also in the Bible, Uriah. He calls him and, you know, says, look, man, he makes him drunk and feeds him, thinking that this guy, after all that a night of, you know, eating and drinking, he will go back to his house and probably he will sleep with his wife. So it will be made known that, look, this child that this woman is carrying is from her husband. But this Uriah, this officer, was so good. He, had such, he was so conscientious, the soldier of Israel, that he wouldn't go home. He said, my companions are out in the field, they are dying, and me I'm going to enjoy with my wife. He said, never. So he stayed behind at the palace. He wouldn't go to his own house. So now what to do? Because sooner or later they're going to discover that Uriah is away for a long time and his wife is now carrying a baby. The rumor will go out that this child is an illegitimate child. And then they'll want to know who, who, who. And a finger might be pointed to David. He says, David is responsible for her condition. So according to the Bible, Hazrat Dawud he writes a letter, seals it, and gives it to Uriah. He says, give it to your commander, Hira, Hira. And in the letter he wrote, put this guy in the thickest of battle that he can't come out alive. And so he does, and the man dies, he's killed. So Hazrat Dawud according to the Bible, was an adulterer, fornicator, haram, and a murderer. Now, such a man, will you accept him as a prophet of God? He says, no. But you see, because the Quran testifies that all the prophets are sinless, we say, look, these are the stories of the Jews against their own people. Suleiman salam, he had 1,000 wives and concubines. In his old age, he made a temple for the worship of idols. Will you accept such a man as a prophet? No. Can you see that? Hazrat Isa salam, he insulted his mother. He insulted the elders of his people. Will you accept him as a man of God? And the Bible says, he says, he says, he's a, described as a gluttonous eater and a wine bibber. Pittak. The Bible says that. Will you accept him as a prophet of God? He says, no. Now you see, no. So we said, look, these are the legends created around people. Similar thing could have happened to the Hindu heroes. It could have happened. They were good people. But the legends that have grown, we will reject them, reject them. So we accept those that I mentioned in the Quran as prophets and sinless. But the principle we accept that every nation has had a prophet. And these prophets before our Nabi, our Nabi is Khatam al Nabi, and he's the last of the prophets. There shall be no prophet after him. Dr. Anwar Ahmed, I want to know whether in an Islamic state the free propagation of other religions is allowed or not. Uh, whether the free propagation, the practice of religion in Islam, sit down, sit down, sit down. The practice of religion, Islam gives you freedom to practice your religion. Everybody is freedom. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, it's a lie ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in religion. We have no right to force Islam down anybody's throats. So in other words, if the guy is a Buddhist, he can practice his Buddhism, Hinduism, whatever ism, he can practice. But it is our duty to guide them, to call them. Allah is telling us to call them all to the way of your Lord. So, ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati. Invite all, all, whether they be Hindus, Jews, Christians, atheists, agnostics, Buddhists, whatever. Invite all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. Well, mawazatil hasanat and with beautiful preaching. Wajadilhum billati ahsan and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. This is our duty. Freedom of religion allowed, but we can't force our religion down people's throats. Uh, there is a question here. It says here, what was the actual word uttered by Jesus for comforter? By Mr. Khalid Niaz is asking this question. See, the actual word, the Quran says, Mimbada ismuhu Ahmad. A messenger coming after me whose name shall be Ahmad. But in the Christian scriptures, in the tradition, they have lost it utterly. So they got 2,000 different names. So only thing left for us to do is now to reason, to deduce, which we have been doing all along. The word there is not to be found. There is no word uttered by Jesus which is recorded. The, question from the ladies are asking him. Yes, where? Asalaamu Alaikum. 
I wanted to ask you a question about um, concerning the Holy Trinity, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Word. I know we don't believe in it. It's wrong, and I know we don't believe in it. Now, but the Christian argues, why is it so difficult for us to believe in it? Like everything has three dimensions. Like uh, left side of the person, the right side of the person, and the front. There are three different aspects, aspects of the same thing. I know it's wrong, but uh, what do I say? What's the answer to, to this? So are there three different aspects of the same thing? Right. Let us see now what they say. You see, I had a phone call this afternoon. A Mrs. Fernandez. Mrs. Fernandez, she says, last night she saw that TV program of mine, and whole night she couldn't sleep. <laughs> so I'm asking her, what did I say that you take exception to? So she said, you said, I can't remember, but she said, I'm not denying it. She said, I said that the Christians are worshiping Jesus as God. That's what I had said, supposed to have said. I can't remember what I said, but she said, and I'm prepared to agree that I could have said that, that the Christians are worshipping Jesus as God, that he is their God. So she says, no, he is not God. He is only a prophet of God, like Muhammad. So I said, look, there's no problem then. Between you and me, there is no problem, because we also believe that Jesus was a mighty messenger of God, not just a prophet, but a great prophet, like Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I said, what church do you belong to? So she said, she is a Roman Catholic. So I said, look, if you are a Roman Catholic, then you believe in the Holy Trinity. So she said, yes. See, without knowing that, you can't argue with people. She says, you are attributing to Christians that we say Jesus is God. And he says, Jesus is not God. That means, I said, look, what church? She said, Roman Catholic. I said, if you are a Roman Catholic, I said, that means you believe in the Holy Trinity. She said, yes. So I said, in your catechism, in your book of instructions, it says that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. I said, is that right? She said, yes. I said, your book continues, your catechism. It says the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, and the Holy Ghost is almighty. But they are not three almighties, but one almighty. Is that what it says? She said, yes. I said, it continues. The Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person, but they are not three persons, but one person. Does it say that? She said, yes. So I said, that is what I'm telling you. That look, this is, <laughs> this is the most nonsensical thing you are saying. Person, 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 but not three persons, but one person. What language is that? That's not English. Can you see? It's very easy just to say bamboozle people. You see, look, we get bamboozled. You know, we get bluffed. The person is speaking English, and she's speaking meticulous English, this lady. She's speaking beautiful English. You know, she's got control over the language. But now when I'm asking a simple, basic question, person, person, person. But you say, not three persons, but one person. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? No, it doesn't. So you say you believe that the Father is there, the Son is there, and the Holy Ghost is there. They believe that at the beginning, which had no beginning, you know, at the very beginning, when Allah, before he created anything, the Father was there, the Son was there, and the Holy Ghost was there. I said, how many were there? No, no, your mind. What does your mind say? You say